In documenting African American history and documenting any history, you always have to go as far back as you can. This is from Muhammad Ali's training camp. This is my wax figure of Hank Aaron. Well, as Betty Davis famously said, buckle your seatbelt, you're gonna be surprised at the ride. I like to say that collecting is God's work because it consumes me completely. We're in the garage and, you know, space is always an issue because somehow or other I have to live here. African American history has been completely ignored. It's been left out of the curriculums of the United States history. This hat could tell the whole story of the Vietnam War. I don't want to die and no white man's war. Flags are very, very rare. I'm a descendant of the last slave to be freed on Staten Island. We have a, a middle school named in honor of my grandfather, a school where I taught for a while. Thy songs were made for the pure and free. They shall never sound in slavery. I always was a fan of Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson is the reason I started collecting. I was a fanatical Brooklyn Dodger fan. So I started going to sports shows looking for Jackie Robinson material. This is his business card and his membership card. If I couldn't find Jackie, I looked to see what else they had. So now I have documented practically the entirety of the African American experience. This medal is called the Benjamin Butler Medal. It is one of the most sought after items in the whole Civil War among collectors. I've been told that I have the world's most comprehensive collection of African American history. We're entering the Civil Rights and Civil Wrongs collection. So you're gonna see true history. You're gonna see primary things that came out of the Civil Rights Movement, remembering that the Civil Rights Movement was primarily a street revolution. We think that the problem was only in the South, but the problem with segregation and racism was countrywide. They have this beautiful hotel, but they wanna assure the guests this beautiful hotel was designed in 1943 for white guests and its facilities are inadequate to accommodate colored guests. When it comes to segregation signs, they didn't just flash through the South, they were in the West, they were in most of the country and they took whatever form the, the designer chose. You know the famous Jewish statement, at least we forget, that, that's really the essence of what documenting history is all about. It's just so poignant and so honest and so uncomplicated. And somebody obviously uh, put it in their store window. Well, when we have a, an item that has significance, the story ought to be told. Nobody could make this up. Ku Klux Klan was a cult, but it was a cult that people were passionately committed to. They're not just anti-black, they're also anti-Catholic, anti-Jew. New York City and New York State are one of the few entities in this whole country that does not have an African-American museum in spite of the fact that most of the population consists of people of color. Slavery is a peculiar institution, but I focus more on abolition because I like the fact that it was collaborative. And if African Americans did not have the help of abolitionists who gave up their life on the basis of a principle, they, I don't believe we ever would have gotten our freedom. We still would be enslaved. Benjamin Franklin is a perfect example because he started out as a slaveholder and then he met some blacks in a school where they were learning Greek and other forms of higher education and he realized he had made a mistake in his assessment. And it's never told. When he died, the last day of his life, he was in Congress begging them to free slaves. So I, I hold the abolitionists in the highest regard because America has never called them heroes. We cannot get away from the fact that when this country was born, when it was created, the only people here were 
African Americans, the Native Americans, and people from the English Commonwealth. So when you consider the length of time that African Americans have been here, they had to be creating stories. Why can't these stories be integrated into the history that they paid a crucial catalytic role in creating? A month is not enough. Our contribution is so much larger than a month. This Bible in appreciation is to be placed in the cornerstone, July 24th, 1890. May the truths it contains last when this structure shall have crumbled to dust. Well, we know that everybody has dreams, and so I have a lot of complicated dreams because the collection is complicated. I wonder if New York feels something is missing from their life. I wonder if America knows that harmony can be increased by a full understanding of the role every American played in making this the great collection, the great country full of collections that it is. When people ask me what the collection is worth, I find myself chuckling and I say to myself, if Marilyn Monroe's dress is worth $5 million and um, Babe Ruth's drawers are worth 1000 what is the history of a people worth? Well, Martin, we tried. I wonder who's going to take our place. America is somewhat handicapped if it doesn't fully embrace all of its people. And in doing that, you embrace all of their history and it glorifies us all. 1619, 2019, the 400th anniversary of Africans in America, our home.